In today's video, what I wanted to do is I wanna show you how I use my policies, my specially designed and engineered whole life policies, and how I use the infinite banking concepts. You know, I talk about everybody else and how they're using it. I give examples of different case studies, but I rarely talk about all the ways I've used it. Now, I've been doing this for quite a while. Matter of fact, here's the binder with all my policy statements in it, quite thick. But I want to break it down. I want to go back to that first time when I used the infinite banking concept to show you what I did then and how it's differed over time. And I'm going to end with the purchase I made just this weekend and how I figured out the math around that to use my private banking system. So let's dive in. So like I mentioned, I've been using the infinite banking concepts for quite a while, but I've owned whole life insurance policies even longer than that. My first policy I bought was in 2004. You see, I was a financial advisor and I started as an advisor in 2003, dating myself a little bit. But in 2004 was my first policy, but I knew nothing about the infinite banking concept. A whole life policy was just a life insurance policy that you got some cash value in and it lasted your whole life, which is why I bought it. But now let me fast forward a little bit to 2013. In 2013, I was working with this one guy. Me and my wife were buying apartment buildings and flipping houses and we borrowed a lot of money from private lenders. One of the private lenders names was Mike. He lent us a bunch of money. I was in Salt Lake City on a snowboarding trip and I remember I called Mike up and I said, hey Mike, I'm in Salt Lake. Do you think we can get together? I've got a deal I'd like to show you because I had a real estate deal that I needed money for. So he met me at the Cheesecake Factory and I remember during the conversation early on, I just said to him, I said, so hey Mike, how do you lend all this money? Just conversation starter, I suppose. And what he said, I wasn't ready for. He said, well, Chris, I lend from my private banking system. And I'm like, whoa. Mike's got a bank, holy crap, I didn't know he was that wealthy. And in my mind, I'm like, why are we at Cheesecake Factory? Let's go to your bank. <laughs> Maybe we can get some dumb dumb suckers, kind of like those things. But he starts to explain to me, he says, I don't have a bank. I mimic what a bank does. You see, I changed where my money goes first. I put it into an institution that pays me guaranteed interest. And every year I get a dividend. And that interest in dividends grows uninterrupted even when I take money out and I give it to you. And it's protected against judgments and liens and all the growth, if done properly, is tax free. My head pretty much exploded. I mean, he did it slower than I just said, but each time he mentioned what it did, I'm trying to fit a little square box as an advisor. What is this? Is this a CD, a bank? What is he using? And I couldn't figure it out, so I asked him. I said, so Mike, what is this? And he says to me, he says, you should know. You're an advisor. It's a whole life insurance policy. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second, no it isn't. I'm like, whole life doesn't work that way. Because I knew what whole life was. Remember I said, I owned a whole life back then. And I, it didn't work anything like what he described because he explained that when he puts money into that whole life, he could take money out immediately in the first 30 days. The policies I had, my old New York life policies, which I have right here, my old New York life policies, like this one right here, those policies, I had no cash value in the first year, none in the second year, and hardly anything to speak of in the third year. So this was all foreign to me. And he said, Chris, it's specially designed and engineered. So I asked him, I said, Mike, can you help me with this? And he said, no, you gotta talk to this guy, Brent. He was alluding to Brent Kessler, you know, who's now my business partner. And Brent Kessler, I called him up, and he's the one that had me watch the 90 minute video. The 90 minute video that I watched way back when, was the video that showed me what the infinite banking concepts was, the process, not the product. I knew what a whole life was. I didn't know how to design it the way they did, but I knew what it was. He taught me the process. And that is where the story begins because the process, folks, is what's gonna make you wealthy. The process is what's gonna change your financial future. The process is what's going to get your problems solved. The product? The whole life insurance policy is just going to make it more efficient. Think of it as a machine. I love cars and the engine is just part of the machine, but the engine is what makes it go faster, what makes it more exhilarating, what makes that engine note. The engine is what I wanted. I wanted the machine and that's what the whole life is. 
But when I first started, let me just show you, and I got this on the board, let me just show you how I did this. The very first policy I started with, now not my old policies, but the first specially designed and engineered policy I started, I remember it was a stretch. I remember sitting there with Brent Kessler, me and my wife were in Mexico, and we were talking about starting this, and I, I kind of just said, well, I think I can do $1,000 a month. Do you know how big of a stretch that was for me? Like that was literally like probably half of my budget that I had, maybe even more. So $1,000 a month is what I started that first policy with. And I did it with a company that he was selling at that time. And that policy was designed 60-40. Now I'm not gonna get into this, but let's just say 60% was going to paid up additions, 40% was going to the base. You see, as, as an advisor, all I knew about was the base. All the old policies that I did, and there's other videos I've shown you my old policies, much like this one right here. This is one of my old whole life insurance policies right here. Okay, this is all base, 100% base. But when we specially design and engineer them, we put a majority of the premium deposit to a special rider called a paid up additions, which gives us high early cash value. So I put this $1,000 a month into this policy. My first goal, it's very important, if you're gonna start the infinite banking concept, you need to understand why you're starting this concept. Like, what are you gonna use this process for? You gotta solve a problem. My first problem, guess what it was? Debts. I had a lot of debt. Being a real estate investor, I accumulated tons of debt, credit card debt, lines of credit debt, HELOC debt. I had debts coming out of my ears. Literally, if you could just see this right now, I got debt coming out of my ears. So my goal, because I had seen the 90 minute video and in there he gave a, an example, a case study of a chiropractor that had $478,000 in debt. $5,600 a month is what he was paying. And they paid all that debt off in six years without him working harder, working longer, or taking on any additional risk. Well, that's what I wanted. I wanted to pay all my debt off. And I started with $1,000 a month. But here's what I did. On a quarterly basis, I designed a plan. Okay, it was called my map. Say, so the, the map that I had worked on a quarterly basis. So in three months, I had put $3,000 into the policy. So if I put $3,000 into the policy in premium deposits, because that, that's what this is, these are our premium deposits, that means I could have taken out about $2,000. So my map, what we did is we put my debts from lowest to highest, okay? So I'm just writing this, lowest to highest. And I remember, I paid them off. The first one, $2,000, I came over here, and I don't remember what it was, I had lots of debts, but I paid off probably a credit card. There was $2,000, and I probably paid $100 a month to that credit card. But then what I did is I took that $100 every single month that I used to give away to that credit card, and I put it back into my policy as a loan repayment. So every month, I'm paying down the loan by $100. Remember, I took $2,000 out, this was the loan, and just so you know, folks, segregated bank account. This is just books and records. I'm putting money from the policy into a bank account, but the only thing this bank account is used for is books and records. So now I have record of $2,000, so that's the loan, so I know that. Then that came over, it paid off this credit card. Then I took that $100 a month that I used to give to that credit card and I put that over here into this segregated bank account. So I got books and records of the loan coming in and I got books and records of each recaptured and recycled payment coming back into the, the bank account. But then I would move that, I would set up a loan repayment and it's just a one page form to repay the loan. Now why would I wanna repay the loan back to the policy? Well, when I take this loan, this $2,000 loan, back when I first started doing this, loan interest rates were 4%. So I would pay 4% to the insurance company on that two grand, which was fine because this credit card over here was like 20%. So 20% minus four, way better, right? I, want, I would rather borrow money at four than 20. Does that make sense? But now when I'm paying the $100 back, I'm actually reducing the amount of the loan. So I'm paying 4% every month on a lower balance, which means at the end of a year, 12 month period, you actually don't 
uh, you don't really realize a 4% interest rate. You realize an APR, an, an annual percentage rate, APR, you would notice that of being probably somewhere in the 3% plus range. Less than four, because I'm being the bank, folks. Banks understand this. They do this every single day. But us as individuals, we're just consumers. We just use this. But see, I was learning how to take back the banking functions in my life early on. And this is how I did it. And I just kept going around and around and around until all the debt was paid off. Matter of fact, one of the big debts that I had was this one right here. This one right here, this line of credit, I remember this was my second policy I used to pay this off. This one was, it was a bank that I banked with, not gonna use their name. It was a line of credit that they charged me 9% interest on. And I remember I wanted to get rid of this thing so badly because every single month when I was making payments, I'd go online and I'd see how much interest the bank was charging me over the course of time. It was a lot. So I wanted to pay this thing off, but it was a $23,000 line of credit. So I needed to accumulate some money. Remember in the beginning, I only started with a thousand a month. Now the second policy was $1,500 a month. So now I'm saving $2,500 every month into two separate policies, not including my old New York life policies. So I had now accumulated 23 grand. So what I did is if you can look here on the left side of the circle, TMM policy, that's my policy. Okay, the 23,000 is the loan, the segregated bank in the middle, remember books and records, and the loan pays the line of credit off. That's the opportunity. The loan is the opportunity. To a bank, a loan is an asset, folks. When you are the bank, like I'm showing you how I did, being the bank, the loan is an asset, not a liability. When you think of a loan, you think of a loan as being a liability because you owe somebody money. But when you originate the loan, that loan is an asset because all the money is coming back to you. As you can see here on the bottom part of the circle, when I paid that line of credit off, $289 a month that I used to give to the bank now comes back into my bank, which my bank is just the policy. So all I'm doing is I'm paying the loan back to the policy, but every payment, $289 every month, is now available to me the second I put it back into the policy. That's the difference. When I paid the bank $289, I did not have $289 the next day. When I pay my bank back, I took back the banking functions. So I'm in control of the money. Therefore, I now have $289. That $289 accounts for principal and interest. I keep all that. And all I have to give back is that interest to the insurance company, which is less than what my policy is earning and a heck of a lot less than what that line of credit was at 9%. Do you see how I was doing this? I started to really understand the process of how the infinite banking concepts worked. So then how did I use it? Well, let's just keep going here. So folks, I had to understand banking. In order for me to keep using the infinite banking concepts, I had to understand banking. So that's what I wanted to do real quick, is I just wanna show you all the different things that you probably use banks for. So first off, you use banks to make deposits. You put money into the bank and the bank pays you interest, right? I'm just gonna pretend you're earning 4% on your money. That deposit from you to the bank, that's a liability to the bank, okay? Because that's money that they technically are borrowing from you that they have to give back. But to turn that liability into an asset, as Robert Kiyosaki would say, what we have to do is we'd have to lend that money out. So they'd lend it out on a home. So for example, if the bank is okay lending on real estate, then I'm okay lending on real estate. I'll come back to that in a little bit. But to get a mortgage would be about 7% today. So if the bank used your deposit, this 100,000 you put in the bank, and loaned that 100,000 out for someone to buy a house, and they were willing to pay 7%, that 100 actually goes to the seller of the house. It's a li it, that liability of the deposit turns into an asset. So now this loan is an asset to the bank because every month this buyer is going to make payments back to the bank. Okay, so the seller puts all the money back in the bank, which is the coolest thing, because they've been taught to do this. Now, the bank gets another 100 grand. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna take that liability and turn it into an asset by lending it out on a car at a higher rate of 8%. Okay, that car then is bought with a loan. The dealership gets the money, puts that 100 grand back 
into the bank. They lend it back out to somebody doing a home remodel. That's 9%. Why? Well, because it's a second lien. It's higher risk than the original first lien position loan. So that 9% pays the contractors. Contractors put the money back in the bank. See, every single time the bank's just getting money in, sending money back out. Taking money in, sending money back out. I want you to think as if you're the bank. Keep that in mind. And then lends it back out on debt consolidation, pays the credit cards off, takes the money, puts it back in. Everything that the bank did here was to make money. Because if the bank paid you four and the bank charged you 7%, the bank made a 3% spread. And as we go around, if they pay you four and charge seven, charge eight, charge nine, charge 12, if I were to add all these up, the spread is 20%. So the bank made 20, you made four. The bank made 500% more than you did because that's five times more. All I did this little bank example for is so you understand how a bank works. Now we gotta change one thing here, folks. If you're going to be the bank like I did, you have to write your name here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write Chris's bank. I do everything here. You see, I deposit money. I deposit it into my bank. My bank just doesn't have the name of a bank on the top. It has the name of an insurance company like this one right here. This is my bank, folks. This policy, this is a whole life insurance policy. This is the bank, okay? I deposit money into the insurance company. Why? Well, because insurance companies pay me a guaranteed interest rate. Insurance companies pay me dividends because I'm, it's a participating life insurance company, meaning they pay me dividends because I'm a policy holder. And those dividends and interest grow tax-free. Remember all the stuff I said earlier about Mike? I'm doing the same thing. So my deposits come into my bank and I lend that money back out. I lend money all the time to people for real estate. I lend money on cars, which I'm gonna give you an example of one of the cars that I bought, but I bought a lot of cars. I lend money on renovations of real estate that we do and other people do. And in the beginning, like I mentioned, I paid off a bunch of debt. You see, I just replaced their name of the bank with my name. It's no longer their bank, it's my bank. So with that being said, let me take you and show you a couple other things that I've done, which are super fun. So as I kept using my policies, I paid off all my debts. And that was many years ago. All my debts were paid off. But you see, I still make debt payments. I still make payments just like I did before. I still have car payments. I have a car payment on this Porsche, that Porsche, the new one I just bought. I have two Mercedes cars in the driveway. I pay payments on those. See, I still make car payments just like you make car payments. I had Visa, I had Amex, I had a Southwest card. I had debts on all of those. I paid all those credit cards off, but guess what I do? I still make the same monthly payment that I used to make to the credit card, but I make it back to my bank because they're no longer liabilities, they're assets. The policies, the loans I took from them, remember I said, here, I put that money in, and today I put hundreds of thousands into my policies, but it didn't start there. So remember, I'm making premiums into my policies. Now I have a lot of policies now, and my premium deposits that I make hundreds of thousands, of dollars per year that I put through my banking system. But I didn't start there, I started small and I worked up to that. And you will do the same thing. So today, some of the big things that I do is I take loans from my policies and I loan those out on Private Money Club. So Private Money Club is, is a dating site for money. I created it, it's, it's where people with money, like people with policies that have cash value, they, and they meet people that need money, and it's all real estate right now. So I find people on Private Money Club that are looking for money, just like I used to, for their real estate deals. I lend between 12 and 15%. So I might take a loan from my policy, I'll just give one that I just did. Okay, I came in on a small deal, it's a Florida deal, they needed 50,000 bucks. You might say you can't buy a house in Florida for 50 grand, which you're right. They put some of the money in it. I came in and backfilled it at 50,000. I took a first lien position on this and I lent it out at 12%. And it's a company called Rude Real Estate. I've lent them a lot of money. You can look them up on Private Money Club. Then that $50,000 at 12%, let's just quickly do the math on that. Some of you probably are doing it already, but 50 grand times 12% divided by 12, that's $500 a month. Definitely could have done that in my head. 
$500 a month is how much he's paying me. I take that $500 a month, I run it through, remember over here, 50K came in, that was the loan, books and records in this segregated bank account, lent that money out, then I take the 500 a month he gives me, I put that through the segregated account, but then I set up a loan repayment for $500 back to the policy. Why the loan repayment? Some people would be like, well, why don't you just keep it in the bank? Well, I don't want the bank to use my money. I want my bank to get that money back. Every time I make that $500 loan repayment back to the policy, that's $500 I have to use the next day. But not only that, if it costs me 5% now to borrow from my policies, every month I'm paying the principal back to the insurance company, so they're charging me 5% of a lower balance. And every step of the way, my cash value in the policy is going up because this is in uninterrupted compounding interest. So now that you understand the concept and you're seeing how I'm using it, I do a lot of this. I do a lot of lending, but you know what else I do? I invest money from it. So not long ago, I did a video on YouTube where I showed how I am buying treasury bonds. So treasury bonds are very unique, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an IOU, a debt issued by the United States government. They're guaranteed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. So I took loans from my policies, I bought treasury bonds from the government. The government paid me over 5% on those treasury bonds. I can't remember the exact amount, but it was over 5%. I took the interest that I get, which they pay me quarterly, and I roll that money back into the policy. So that's another way I've used my policies. But my favorite way to use policies is to buy cars. Every car that I mentioned, now I'm not bragging, okay, but I, I, I love cars, I do. So we've got a really nice uh, SUV for my wife, Mercedes biggest AMG version. I've got a G63, which is the G-Wagon, as you know, the AMG one. I've got three Porsches now. All of those vehicles were all funded with my policies. Now, I didn't get there quick. You notice I was highly in debt when I first started this in 2014. And now I'm buying cars with it. Why would I buy cars? Well, let me show you the main reason why I love teaching and using this to buy cars. Not just because I love cars, but I also like getting money by driving, a, a, I like getting paid to drive cars. And that's essentially what it is. All right, so this one's a little bit more complex and I've only done this once, but let me just give you an example. Let's just say the G-Wagon was 170,000 bucks. Now folks, I'm just using my examples. This video is about my examples. Whatever kind of car you buy, I bought lots of cars. My first car I bought was only like 20,000 bucks through the policy. I've just grown with it. And as time's gone by, I've made more money through interest and dividends and the compounding nature. So I just have more money. So now, if I were to buy a $170,000 car, let's just say that's about 3,000 bucks a month. Okay, whoops, sorry. 170, that would mean I'd have to have $170,000 in cash value, which I clearly did. I took the loan for the 170 and I bought the car. So let's just, let's get rid of this. Over here, we'll just draw a G-Wagon. They're pretty simple. They're just a box with a couple windows. So there's my G-Wagon. So I bought the G-Wagon. Now, remember I said the G-Wagon, if I were to have financed or leased that, would have came with about a $3,000 a month payment. So I take the $3,000 that I would have paid to the finance company. If you do this, all of you do, because you buy cars. When you buy a car, that money you pay, that car payment, okay, that's what this is, car payment, is gone. Every month you pay it to somebody else's bank, and every month that three grand or whatever your car payment is, is gone forever. You'll never get it back because the car will depreciate, it will be a loss. But you see, I changed the dynamic. I started using my banking system. I took back the banking function, so here's how it works each and every time. And in the 90 minute video, I give a car example showing you how you get all the money back for every car you buy, drive, and own. I've done this continuously over and over and over again. So here, if I make a payment of $3,000 a month back to my policy, remember books and records, so three grand a month comes in here and three grand a month comes over here. Because this is my bank, I keep this money. The 3,000 a month that I make a payment on every month, I get to use that money again. When, as soon as the payment comes in, that three grand's in my policy. But because I do this, if you just did the math on this, $3,000 times 
60 months, I, don't, I probably didn't do the math right, but let's just see if I got close, times 60 months, yeah, I did do it. It's 180,000 bucks. I'm just rounding numbers here, folks. I think my payment's a little over 3,000, but that's $180,000. If I paid 170 for the vehicle, and I pay myself $3,000 for 60 months, the average term that somebody would finance a vehicle, I pay my policy back $180,000. So how much money did I make? Some of you are like, well, you paid 170, you made 180, you made $10,000. Wrong, okay? That's how much money I made, but that isn't how much money I made. That G-Wagon has value. Even five years old, that G-Wagon's gotta be at least be worth 120. So the residual value, let's say is 120. So if I sell that G-Wagon that I got all the money back for, plus 10 grand, is that pure profit? Yeah. So now I got a value of the G-Wagon if I sell it for $120,000. But not only that, my policy, the cash value in the policy, started at 170, but I took 170 out. How much was left? 170. Because I didn't use my money. I used the insurance company's money. They lent it to me. They lent me part of my death benefit. So I made interest and dividends on 170 grand for five years. How much was that? I don't know, but this is one of my old policies that I did a video on, and this is the 16th year, the, this year, which is 2024, folks, you can look at this, 2024, what is my return I made down here? 82% that year? Yeah, I made $3,655 and I put in 4,407, so how much was my return? 82%. My cumulative return over the 16 years was 28%. So I still made money. So this example of buying a car, effectively I make money three times buying a car. But I mean, I just it's just easier to say I get all the money back. So this is another way I use my policies. And I use it for nice cars now, but it didn't start that way. Let me just go into just a couple other things and then I'm gonna wrap. A few other unique things that I've used my policies for. There was a, a time a while ago, and thank God it was a while ago, when I had first started doing this, Shauna, who's my director of operations now, she comes into my office and she had this somber look on her face. And she says to me, she says, Chris, should I look for, start looking for another job? I was completely confused. I thought things were starting to get better. They weren't great, but they were getting better. I'm like, what do you mean, why? I was super nervous. Like if I lost her, that was my only employee. And she, and she says to me, she says, well, because I got my paycheck because we mailed her a paycheck. And she says, and I looked at the bank account because she used to, you know, just keep tabs on the bank account. And she's like, there's not enough money in the bank account to clear my check. I'm just wondering, should I start looking for another job? Now, I was kind of confused. First off, I didn't know there was not enough money to clear her paycheck. I knew it would be tight, but I said, nope, just give me a couple, give me a couple minutes. I'll have money back in the account. I quickly logged into my policy, this one right here that I just showed you. I logged into that company. I clicked max loan. I had that loan put right into that bank account. So 36 hours later, I think it was a little less, the money shows up in the account. She sees it and she's like, awesome. She doesn't need a new job. I don't need to go hunt for a new director. And she said, how did you do that? I said, my own banking system. I took a loan from my banking system and I lent it to the company. And my company then paid back that loan with interest. I charged my company 6%. Money isn't free. So I charged 6%. So remember, if it cost me 5% to borrow the money and I charged six to my company, what did I make? A spread. That's exactly how a bank works. Think just like a bank. So that's one unique way. But there was another really unique thing that I did. So our company relies heavily on a commercial printer. You know, one of those big printing machines that scans, it staples, it slices, it dices, and it prints. Yeah, those things. They're not cheap. And most companies lease those. So we had leased it back prior to me doing the banking system. And those leases are usually three years. Three years had gone by. The salesman with his brown suit and his striped brown and tan tie walks in and he says, hey, you know, listen, your machine's outdated, but I got good news. I got this brand new machine and you can have this and your lease payment only goes up $20. And at first I'm like, oh, great. Wow, we get a new machine. It prints more copies. It staples more copies. It slices and dices <laughs> and it's only $20 more a month. But then my banking brain kicked in. 
Think like a bank. You see, I don't need to use other people's banks or finance companies. I have my own bank. So I quickly said to that copy machine salesman, I said, so how much would it be if I just wanted to buy it? You may not believe me when I tell you this, but he didn't know. Nobody had ever asked him that. Everybody leases these machines. And rightfully so, because in three years, they're outdated. But you see, because I knew how banking worked, I said, how much would it be to buy it? So he comes back, he actually called back, he said 8,900 is the price to buy it. So let me just give you a fresh screen and I'm just gonna show you how this one works and then we're gonna wrap on this. Remember, I had my policy over here and I had cash value. So to buy the copy machine over here, so I'm just gonna do my best iteration of drawing you a copy machine. It's got a couple lines, got this little thing up top, yep, like that. And then I got my little paper thing or majigger. Oh, and then I got a big stapler thing. Yeah, so close enough, right? That's my copy machine. $8,900 for this bad boy. And remember, he wanted to lease it to me. The lease payment was about $281 a month for a 60 month lease, give or take a buck or two. So I had $8,900, I actually had more than that in my policy. So what I did, and I'm just gonna draw this here, this is your segregated bank account, like I kept showing you. I took a loan from my policy. It cost me about 5% interest, simple interest, to take that loan. 8,900 went into the segregated account. I wrote a check to the copy machine salesman for $8,900. Now I own the copy machine, but I also have a loan for my policy. Then what I did is I ran the math, and I'll do the math with you, and it might be off a little because I'm not giving you the exact dollar amounts. I've done another video where it was exact, but $281 times 60 months. $16,860. I think it was a little less than that payment, but we'll just go with that. I took this $281 a month, and every single month, my company, Money School, wrote this check to me. It cleared the bank account, books and records, loan, loan payments, and then I pay it back to my policy every single month. Now, I think I'm only like three years or so into it, maybe two years into this copy machine, but just look at how that would work. If these were the numbers, it cost me 8,900 to buy the machine. My company writes a check to me, which is tax deductible to the company, for $281 a month. Now remember, folks, I want you to all remember, $281, I would have paid it to the finance company. All of you that own businesses that have copy machines, look at it. How much are you paying to lease that machine? And at the end of the lease, do you have anything? Nothing, they just take it and they give you a new one and you keep making payments. So here, all I did is I made the payments to my bank. $281 a month, and if that was the, the lease amount, and I don't remember the exact amount, over five years, it would have been 16,860. So if you subtract that from the $8,900, minus 8,900, $7,960 in net gain. But is that all that I made? No. I own the banking system. I control the terms. I control the money. So I make 7,960 in the copy machine, plus I had $8,900 compounding the entire five years. What was that worth? I don't know, quite a bit. And then not only that, I got a stupid copy machine. So this copy machine after five years, it's definitely not worth 8,900, but you think I could sell it for 500 to 1,000 bucks? You bet your sweet ass I can. So if I sell it for 500 to 1,000 dollars, how many times did I make money? because I changed one thing. I changed where my money went first, many years ago. I added one step, which is this process, this circle that I keep drawing over and over, which is called the infinite banking concept. I made money on the policy, I made money because I normally paid interest to the finance company, so I made all that, plus I had a copy machine worth money that was bought and paid for. Folks, these are just some of the ways. It's called the infinite banking concepts because it's infinite in what you can use it for. You can use it for anything, vacations, taxes. I am only telling you the things I've used it for. I've used it for real estate, for lending, for paying off debt, for buying copy machines, for paying my company money when it needed it for payroll and, and all the other things I mentioned. How many more things am I gonna use this for in my life? A lot. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I got a chance to kind of go back and revisit the past on how I've done this, but you know what? It's not important what I've done, it's important what you're going to do. What is your next step? If you're interested in seeing how this works, what you need to do is right in the top, in the bio, there's a video. Watch that 90 minute video. I did and it changed my life and it will change yours. Book a call with us. Not only that, right down at the bottom, click that subscribe button, there's a little bell at top. Smash 
that bell so you're notified. You see that? It hit my mouse and pulled up a bunch of cool things. Smash that little bell so you're notified every single time I put up a new video. Hopefully the mouse didn't break because every time I smash this thing, I seem to break something. But with that being said, folks, check this video out. It's the remastered 90 minute. It's called Secrets of the Rich. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.